Would you like to know why half of all working enterprise architects don't come from a technology background? If so, this video is for you. Hi, my name is Mike Gibbs. I'm an enterprise architect with a little over 25 years experience. In today's video, we're gonna talk about why half of the working enterprise architects don't have a technology background and why they're still quite skillful in the role. Now, the reason I'm going and making this video is so many people say you can't be an architect without being an engineer first. And yet 50% of the working architects are working without an engineering background. And let's talk about why that actually is. And let's talk about the difference between the skills. An engineer has the strongest technical skills for the most part of anybody working in technology. It is hands-on. How do I build it? How do I fix it? How do I troubleshoot it? Now that is focused domain. The architect's role is not about building anything. It's not about troubleshooting anything. It's about designing certain things and enhancing the business. So of all the roles I've ever had in my entire life, the closest role I had to the enterprise architect was when I worked as a management consultant. Management consulting, enterprise architecture feels very, very similar to me. So while the engineer might be building, what we're doing as enterprise architects is translating a business strategy into a technology direction. Now we're doing it from a consultant's perspective. We go to the client, we ask a lot of questions, we build a team, we lead the team, and that team helps us design the strategy. So it's not about our engineering skills at all. It's about our ability to understand the big picture, understand all the business challenges, understand how all the parts fit together and create the team that can help us design that entire strategy. So for us, it's about how good of our influence is and how big our team is and how good our team is as opposed to how good we are with the technology. So in order to have any kind of credibility, in order to translate business strategy, into a technology solution. That means we have to understand finance. We have to understand business operation. We have to understand our risk management. We have to understand the customer experience and the customer impact and revenue and management of revenue and operating uh, or the way an organization can operate. We have to, and most engineers don't have that, but many people from a business executive perspective do. Now, when we're in an enterprise architecture role, this is a consulting-like role, which means we're gonna to have to speak to many decision makers, many key stakeholders along the way. We'll be speaking with the executives. We may be presenting to the board or the CIO. So by doing so, we have to have that executive presence, that level of influence, that level of advisory skills. Whether that's uh, telling a story or persuading an organization, lots of executive presence. And again, that doesn't typically come from tech careers. It comes from sales often. It comes from management consulting. It comes from executive skills. So you're seeing these skills really map to that of an executive, not necessarily a technology professional, which is why enterprise architects are paid executive pay. Now, what we have to do as enterprise architects is align an organization. So we have to be somewhat of a glue between business units, between the, the strategy, uh, operations teams, IT teams, governance structures. So we are big picture focused, alignment, coordination, what have you where the engineers are specialized in a specific domain, like network engineering, but we're dealing with big picture, compute, storage, AI, security, applications, data, and so many other things, which is why we need an architecture team, which we need to lead. Now, most of what we do, and this would be in a strategy consulting role and any leadership or executive role, as well as the enterprise architecture role, is we're always assessing strategic options, the various trade-offs and their implications on the business. How do we manage or mitigate long-term risks? Again, it feels much more like a strategy consultant because that's what we're doing here. We're solving business problems by aligning business technology, optimizing key processes. So now when we start thinking about deliverables and what are we doing? What is our output as an architect? Well, it's architecture artifacts. So it could be a roadmap for an organization, a capability map, a value stream map, a business process map, a governance map, those types of big picture things, uh, design documents, what have you. Whereas the engineers would be coming up with maybe an infrastructure 
or a configuration. So again, it's very different work that we're doing. I hope you're starting to see that enterprise architecture is an executive role and more of executive skills. And you just don't learn these skills in engineering. That doesn't mean engineers can't become great architects. They can, they can be wonderful architects. They learn the business acumen, they learn the architecture skills, and then they've got the benefit of tech background too. I'm just saying it doesn't, you don't have to have that background and here's the reason why. Now, again, it's our, as architects, as enterprise architects, cloud architects, in any case of an architect, we're focused on transformation. How do we make that business better? How do we change the way that organization operates? We're focused on how we have two companies with a merger or an acquisition and how do we harmonize those systems and processes? If we're going to go to the cloud, why do we use a hybrid multi-cloud? Where do we place our workloads? What are the trade-offs of each? What kind of operating model do we use? Do we use a diversification model or a unification model and why? So these are really the things that we're dealing. So if we look at the enterprise architect, this is a high level skill set. It's an executive, which is why it technically can translate well to a CIO role or others, because it's an executive position. Strategic thinker, stakeholder management, executive communication, lots of business acumen, lots of negotiation, lots of executive skills, which is different than the technical skills of those who build the systems. Now, both of these skills are critical. We need all the people, they're all critical. We need all these skills out there. It's just that these are different skills. So that's why 50% of all the working enterprise architects don't come from a tech background. That's why if you came from a healthcare background like I did before I moved into enterprise architecture 25 years, it made sense. Because what I was doing in internal medicine as a nurse practitioner was a lot like a strategy consultant. So its point is, is you know, it doesn't matter where you come from. Anyone can be an enterprise architect. Anyone can be a cloud architect. Anyone can be a security architect. Anyone can be a physician, an airplane pilot, or a lawyer. All you need is the right skills. So don't let your background define you. Let your training and future define you. So if you would like to become an enterprise architect or a cloud architect or a security architect or an AI architect, join me on a free architecture webinar. We run two each week. In these free architecture webinars, we'll go over what we do in the various architecture roles, like a cloud architect, security architect, or AI architect, or enterprise architect. We'll talk about the exact skills you'll need. And we'll talk about how to stand out and get hired. And these architecture webinars are free. They are live on Zoom, so you can ask me any questions, and you can register for our free architecture webinars in the description of this video. While you're in the description of this video, guess what? We have a lot of things to help you in your architecture career. For example, guides on how to win the interview, guides on how to become a cloud architect or an AI architect. So sign up for some, they'll be emailed to you. They're all free in the description of this video. Now, if you enjoyed this video on why 50% of enterprise architects don't come from a tech background, please give it a like, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell to be notified of new videos to assist you in your enterprise architect, cloud architect, security architect, or AI architect career. This is Mike Gibbs signing off for now, and I hope to see you in another webinar or architect video real soon. Take care.